Welcome back to the show. Today we're back with a video um, about Ferrania, and you probably can barely see it there. But Ferrania um, has had a bit of a bumpy road in their history. And I just came back from Photopia, the photography fair in Hamburg. And in Photopia, there was what I would call the analog corner or the place where people were sharing analog love and artists, and it was called Chromeland. It was organized by Chrome, a store in Hamburg, and Photopia. So in Chromeland, they, uh, Ferrania had a booth. And when I say booth, I mean a desk with some roles and a person representing Ferrania. I have lost contact with Ferrania years ago. I used to talk to Dave Bias, which is Ferrania, used to be, I think, Ferrania's US uh, representative. I say used to be because I've been informed that maybe he's no longer with the project full time. Um, and basically there was this person there at the booth. Um, and Ferrania, like I said, Ferrania came out with a Kickstarter campaign to basically save film Ferrania's uh, factory machinery, color chemistry, color engineers, all of this from being demolished. This was years ago. And ever since then, they have failed to deliver the color, failed to deliver the cinema film that they said they would do for color two and failed to do many things. But what they haven't failed to do is survive. They have managed to survive all this time. And Film Ferrania started off by that campaign, but managed to survive thanks to black and white. This roll of film here is a P30, the first emotion they came out with, and it's the alpha version, which was very much previous to beta. This roll itself was bought by me, not through the campaign, but after the campaign, in order to support them ongoing with film production. The interesting thing is, during all these years of Ferrania making or trying to make film, they've had all kinds of problems with reconnections to gas and electricity and heating and all this in their main building. They have a store, a five-story building in, um, I think it's something Monte Forte, I can say, it's an Italian town. But basically they're there in Italy trying to make film. And throughout this time, there was a moment that they actually needed investment. And that was something the last time I actually talked to them properly, they were looking for investors that would be able to help Ferrania continue and bring products to life, which they knew they could, but they just need a little bit more time. And in that realm, they told me that they basically what they were looking for was kind of an angel investor that was willing to give a sum of money, but not a really big sum of money. They didn't want to lose control. And if you are in investments and in VCs and angel investors, you will know that it's really hard to find those medium to low investors. Usually it's people that want full control or have like, they'll put 10 million to your company trying to help you create a hundred million company. So this is where Ferrani had a hard time, but it seems that they figured it out. They found a partner. I do think they lost ownership, the principal owners, like the people that started it, but these new ownership is kind of aligned with them in the sense that they're trying to make film, trying to fill the market with new products made in Italy, all made in what could be probably the one of the smallest film factories there is today. So at this fair in Photopia, I talked to one of the representatives and they showed me a couple things that I think are interesting with you guys. One of them, Ferrania started with P30, the film I have there, but now they have P30 that is coming with a glossy box like this one. This one's kind of glossy. That's why it shines so much with my light. Uh, but it also is coming now with a matte finish. The one with matte finish, which is a newer box, is a newer emulsion of the P30 and is actually more like an ISO 100 film. I don't know to what extent the P30 old version and the new version are going to coexist, or are we going to have a P30 that is 80 ISO that is glossy box and also a matte box, which will be ISO 100. That is something that I think is weird. Either they're going to go to the 100 ISO and just say 80, because we all know that the 80 was actually more like 64, or they're going to have these two coexist. But then they also mentioned something about Ferrania P33. That would be a 400 ISO black and white film. But that is kind of news. And they've also released the film in 120 format. So now not only do we have 35, but we have 120 rolls. But also they have mentioned that the, chem the chemists that are at, at Ferrania were never really black and white chemists. They weren't making black and white emulsions for Solaris or 3M. They were color chemistry, color coding chem uh, chemists. So what they really want to do is color. 
So Ferrani has been saying color, 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 but doing black and white. But this time they said that they are actually starting to be begin the work for color film. We all know the hardest thing about color film is actually consistency. Making one batch today and another batch in two years that will have the same color, same contrast, same color, same saturation, all of this. That's why Lomography has been making these weird, quirky, kind of like Lomo Purple, Lomo Metropolis, because they were kind of iterations of them trying to find consistency in color film. But back to Ferrania, they did mention, like I said, P30, P30 ISO 100, P33 ISO 400, and color. Color is not coming this year. It's probably maybe coming at the end of next year. I don't have hard uh, facts. And one thing I am gonna to try to do for this channel, for everybody that's interested in film photography, is go ahead and visit Ferrania because what they have done is, to me, the prime example of what we would have, to, like what we need in the film photography is smaller size productions that are capable of doing everything in-house. And by that, I mean, sensitize uh, the emotion, coding the emotion, not scratching obviously the emotion, cutting the emotion, which is called converting, which means making that master pancake roll into what they call pancakes uh, or master roll to pancakes. From there, perforating for 35 and then spooling it into 35 canisters or 120 film. And this means that they have full independence from the rest of the production or market. If Ilford closes, they're fine. If Kodak closes, theoretically, they're fine. If, you know, any other player closes, they're fine. And this means making the cassettes in-house, finding how to do the 120 and the spooling, that is really hard. But it's really good news if this is actually fully true. And when I say that this is maybe true or maybe not true is because Ferrania, like I said, has failed to deliver on their promises. And by that, I feel like unless I see it with my own eyes and I can film it and I can show you guys here on YouTube, I will still think that Ferrania is doing it, but I will have a bit of a doubt. And it's not that I'm being, you know, negative about Ferrania. I wish them the best, but I do want to be truthful with the community and see what they're gonna come. I don't know if the ISO 80 versus 100 is gonna be a reality, like I said, which one's gonna stay. If P33 will come soon or not. If their 120 maybe is not being made by them and is converted somewhere in Asia, like we've seen from other players. So, like I said, this is kind of like news, but it's kind of like, take it with a pinch of salt because it's coming from Ferrania, which is in the past, failed to deliver. And I'm not saying they've lied, I'm just saying they failed to deliver. So I will try my best to visit Ferrania and document what I see there. Obviously there'll be things I can't document because there might be some NDAs, but I'll try my best to go there. If you're interested in me going there, please leave a comment below. I would really know if it's worth it for me to do that trip and document Ferrania in any way, if they even let me. But it is good to see that they were there, they were really waiting or willing to answer questions that they have product there to show that it is in stock in many places. And theoretically, they've given everybody that backed the Kickstarter campaign the possibility to convert their original backing to an actual product that they're making today. As they failed to deliver the initial batch, they have told people many times you can get store credit, you can change it per P30 in 35 or 120, and maybe if there's more film stops coming, you might be able to convert it. They've been trying really hard to keep those people that really supported them. And I'm not even included in that kind of group because I saw it and I was like, that's really amazing. But the product they were advertising wasn't exactly my interest at that time. So I didn't back them. Today, I would probably back them because I think there's a future to film and helping each other. But yeah, I would love to hear what you think. If you actually have shot Ferrania, like I said, this is the alpha version, which I shot and got some scratches, but the tonality of this film was amazing. And I do want to keep on you know, supporting Ferrania and seeing that they're still around. This is the biggest deal to me is that we need more people doing what not everybody can do, which is converting, coding, designing new emotions and finishing products and delivering to people. But yeah, let me know what you think about Ferrania. Like I said, this all came from Photopia in Hamburg at the Chrome land, the analog corner, which was super, super cool to see. All these industry players were there. There's gonna be more videos about the industry and what I found out there. Like I said, most of it is just me talking to them and telling you 
there was not that much time for interviews or behind the scenes. But I hope that if I can, I will be able to fulfill all these pieces of news or information into actual videos with proof. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.